One of the questions that I get asked the most on this channel is how do you program realistic sounding guitars with MIDI instruments? And it's a question that I always kind of dodge because I grew up playing guitar and I have a bunch of guitars in my studio. So typically if I need guitar on a song, I'll either play it or I'll hire out a session guitarist because I don't know, it's one of those things where I always like the live thing if I have that. However, I understand that some people don't have access to a guitar, some people don't have the money to purchase a guitar, some people don't know how to play a guitar. And so I wanted to make a video where I kind of show you a bunch of little techniques that you can use to really transform a MIDI guitar instrument and make it sound as realistic as possible because these little, little tips can go an extremely long way for getting you a very realistic result with all MIDI instruments. So we're gonna jump in and check that out in one second, but before we do, I just have a really quick announcement. I am super, super excited to announce that today we are launching our spring sale for 2024. So from right now until the end of April 14th, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have 25% off of all sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, courses, bundles, and that lasts until the end of April 14th, 25% off of absolutely everything. And I have one more really exciting announcement, something I've been holding off for months that I'm super excited to talk about. And that is that we just launched our brand new start to finish production course called Producer Principles Indie Rock and Alternative. This course is 16 and a half hours. It's 47 different lessons where I show you how to write, produce, engineer, edit, mix, and master an indie rock song similar to artists such as Claro, Phoebe Bridgers, Boy Genius, Wallows, Bleachers, all of those kind of indie rock acts that you know and you love. We produce a song in that style from start to finish. We go over mixing live drums, working with MIDI guitar as well as real guitar, sculpting tones, how to record vocals. It is a super, super in-depth course. I am super excited that it's finally out. We put so much time and effort into this one. So you can go enroll in that now. That is also 25% off. The course will normally be 250 bucks, but if you get it for the spring sale, you can grab it for 187.50 and you have lifetime access. So go check out that course. Go check out Producer Principles 101 and go check out all of our other stuff that we have on our website right now. It's at makepopmusic.com. Shop the spring sale before it's over on April 14th. All right, thanks for bearing with me with those announcements. I was really excited to get that out of the way. Now, let's go ahead and let's dive in. So the first thing that I want to talk about when you are working with MIDI guitar is that you need to kind of understand how a guitar works, right? I think this kind of goes for all MIDI instruments. The more that you know about an instrument, the more you know about the terminology and the technique that goes behind playing it, I think the more realistic results you can get. It's like when you program drums, you understand that people have two hands and two feet, and so you can't program more than that because it'll just automatically sound unnatural. Same thing kind of goes with guitar. You should know the strings, so typically a guitar is six strings, sometimes acoustics are 12, and then you should kind of know how those are spaced apart. So typically a string has about five semitones from the next one down. And so when you are programming guitar parts, just make sure that you don't have a bunch of overlapping notes that would typically happen on the same string of a guitar because it's one of the most immediate ways to make it sound fake. Um, other than that, there's just a bunch of little terms that you might want to know. So when I open up an example that I'm going to show you in a second, if you don't know anything about guitar, this might look overwhelming, right? So if you go to their preset browser, if you go down here, you might see a bunch of things called open, muted, mixed, strummed, arpeggio, riff. You're going to see things like hammer-ons and pull-offs. You're going to see things like palm mute. You're going to see things like doubling. If you don't know anything about acoustic guitar, it might be hard for you to go ahead and just start programming it, even with a really good library like some of the native instrument stuff or some of the ample guitar stuff. If you don't know how a guitar is laid out or you know what palm muting is versus open picking is or what finger picking sounds like versus using a uh, pick or a pluck drum, you're going to have a lot of trouble dialing in that tone. So I think first and foremost, learn a little bit about guitar, even if you can't play guitar, even if you don't have a physical guitar, knowing when to use a neck pickup versus a bridge pickup, or when to use a pick versus fingers, or when to use palm mutes versus open strumming. That is 99% of the battle that I see people have issue with when they program uh, MIDI guitar. It just doesn't sound real because it's not played like how a guitarist would play on that song. So once you learn those things, then you can kind of start to dive into libraries. You can kind of start to figure out, do you want to use a library like Electric Sunburst that really runs off of loops and off of somebody who played a bunch of different versions of something? Or do you want to program your own melodies? So let's go ahead and let's talk about the differences of that. So here's what our guitar will start off like when I'm talking about bad programming, bad sound selection, bad arrangement. This is what it sounds like.
So let's go ahead and talk about the first thing, which is just making sure that you have the right pattern picked or you have the right instrument picked. So for the first one, I want a palm muted sounding guitar. So I'm going to use the Electric Sunburst by Session Guitarist and Native Instruments. And then when you're using something like their guitar plugins, it's really easy for you to go and sort. <laughs> So you can hear all of those different patterns. They all sound different, they all react differently, and then something like this will have key changes. Then if you hit something like C-sharp one, you have muted. If you go to D1, you'll have straightforward, muted. So just knowing how the guitar plugin that you're using is laid out and how to kind of alternate between different strumming patterns or different chord patterns, that is huge when it comes to creating realistic sounding guitar, especially when you're using something like a library that runs off of chord generation. Also, you can get, take it an extra way if you want to pull up the auto chord. So you could go ahead and do things like play sus chords or seventh chords. Take it up an octave. Things like having that chord generator in there is really nice to make sure that you can kind of get realistic voicings, realistic movements. If I'm doing something that is chord generated, so, you know, like palm mutes like this, a big strummy acoustic guitar, I'm almost always reaching for a library that has those movements baked in because if I don't, it's really, really hard, almost impossible to program something that feels that dynamic and has that kind of bounce with kind of chord movement. So once you have your guitar sounding exactly like you like it, we have this. One thing that I like to do to really kind of dial in the sound is I'm going to go ahead and take all the amps and effects off. And that gives me something called Guitar DI, Direct Input. So what I like to do when I'm programming MIDI guitar is get DI so then I can go ahead and pop my own tone on. Because a lot of these libraries have tones kind of built in. I don't find them as good as I could kind of dial in on my own. So... By simply, you know, selecting the right pattern, knowing my chord changes, and then taking off that effect, we get something that automatically sounds a little bit more realistic. Now, I've gone ahead and made a kind of alternate version of that that has a tone that I've built from Tone King Imperial by Neural DSP. I like to use third-party, uh, you know, amp VSTs because it's what I would do on a live guitar. And now we have something that sounds like this. I'll also typically bounce those kind of chord generated guitar files into audio so I can go ahead and cut them. I can have the accent plucked exactly where I want them. And if you didn't know any better, you'd probably think that that was a real guitar. So that's just a quick example of how to take something that sounds, you know, like this. And then turn it into something like this. get rid of these amps and put something a little bit more realistic on it. So that's what I do when it comes to like palm muting guitar or chord guitar. I'll typically just try to find the right sound and then dial it back, dial in my own little uh, tone and then go from there. Let's go ahead and let's talk about a guitar melody. So this is using the electric mint guitar. This is where I'm just going to play one note at a time. This is where it really comes in handy knowing you know, where your fingers would fall on a guitar. Like for example, on a guitar, those two notes are probably not gonna be played at the same time because you're probably gonna play them on the same string. So one way that you can get around that is by playing the mono version. But sometimes a mono version also won't have it feel right if you're trying to play a lower string. So I just try to be cognizant when I am programming this of doing something like. Instead of, you know, if I was playing piano, maybe I leave those. Like that chord is never going to happen like that on a guitar. You need to kind of understand guitar voicings when you're using these kind of single melodic instruments. So now that we have that, again, what I like to do is kind of just take this amp off. And then this is really where I talk about like knowing what you want with a guitar. Because if I had something like my Fender Strat, I can swap my pickups. They sound drastically different. Versus this. Versus this. 
Do you want them doubled so they're wide? Do you want fret noise? Do you want the tuning precise or sloppy? Sometimes I'll loosen up on the tuning so it's not so perfect. For this, I didn't want double. I like it on that middle pickup. I'm gonna bring the noise down just a little bit and then I don't need this mic. So once I have that tone exactly how I like it, I go from, you know, having MIDI that looks like this, where everything is just 127 velocity, everything falls right on the grid. Because that's not realistic, that's not how a guitar player would play it. And what I do is I start to humanize things. So as you can see here, things are slightly after or slightly before the grid. Uh, we don't have, you know, everything hitting at the same exact velocity. So now we get this. And that just sounds so much more realistic rather than this. Then I'll print out that Guitar DI. I'll do the same thing where I pop a tone on. And then I'll pan it to the side just like I would with a real guitar. So now we go from having this kind of generic palm mute and this generic melody. To feeling a lot more realistic just by doing, you know, smart programming, automation, dynamic programming. And then you kind of just do the same thing with every guitar layer. Let's do one more so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So let's do like a guitar pluck, maybe like a 1975, you know, nightly style pluck. So this one is just using the electric vintage. So again, as you can see, this is all programmed at 127. It's all perfectly to the grid. It just doesn't feel real at all. So first thing that I like to do again is make this feel a little bit more real, play it like how a guitar player would. So I have dynamic velocities and I'm also adding in these little kind of ghost notes. So ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a like up picking and down picking. And it just feels a lot more realistic and a lot more dynamic than something like this. Now, once I do that, I've picked the right instrument. I've picked exactly what I want. I don't have a pattern. I'm just playing this muted melody. Again, if I play this open, doesn't sound right. That's why you need to know if you need to palm mute or if you want to play it open. Or do you want to play it with a finger? That's too soft. Then we go to our amps, don't need those. We go to guitar settings. I'm actually on the both pickup. So on uh, any kind of humbucker guitar, you have a bridge and a neck. This one's gonna use both. Go ahead and dial my settings in, print out that DI. And then once I have DI and I pop my own little tone on there, it sounds like this. Here's the DI. Go ahead and add some EQ add my own little amp sim. This is just a Quarry Wong by Neural DSP. I have some compression, some tube saturation, like a tube screamer, basically. I have my amp. I have some EQ happening. I can play around with like the cabinet miking. I have my chorus, my delay, my reverb, and now something that sounds like this straight off rip. Sounds like this. It's still the same exact instrument. But since we did dynamic, you know, programming, we have different velocities. Everything's not on the grid. We're kind of programming this more like how a guitarist would play. It just goes a really, really, really long way. So we've talked a little bit about how to pick the right patterns, how to, you know, dial in your DI tone, print that out so you can process it like a live track guitar, and how to go ahead and handle some, you know, different picking patterns or like lead patterns. The last thing that I want to cover is how to actually figure out the voicing for acoustic guitar. So here is an acoustic that we have. This is just the picked acoustic. This is just the melody from Session Guitarist. I used all of these because they came in complete. Um, so a lot of people will probably have these. And uh, here's what it sounds like. If we, you know, just play it out. 
it sounds super, super fake. One thing that I want to talk about before I show you how we're going to humanize that uh, MIDI is I want to actually explain to you a little bit about guitar voicing, right? So if I play an acoustic guitar, if I'm trying to play a C major, on piano, typically, you'll just play that little, uh, you know, triad. You'll play the C, the E, and the G. However, on an acoustic guitar, the way that the strings are set up, you don't typically voice it like that. So on a guitar, what you would probably do is you'd play the C as the root, and then you'd probably play that G on the next string down, and then you would probably go ahead and play something like that E a little bit higher up. So you can kind of experiment with that. Cubase actually has a really cool tool called the Chord Generator. Or uh, in the Chord Pads, you can actually pick if you want your voicings to be selected like a piano or like a guitar. So if we go to guitar, it spaces out that voicing a little bit. So what I'm doing if I'm kind of adding in my own strum guitar or I'm kind of adding in a guitar chord with MIDI is I'll swap this to Guitar Player just to kind of double check that I am voicing it like a guitar. I know Logic has this feature. I'm pretty positive Ableton has this feature. Most DAWs should have where you can kind of swap the voicing between piano and, and guitar because, again, they are so different. So you can pick triads, modern jazz, whatever you want. And then, you know, once you have a chord... You can change the voicing. You can add extensions. Those are all a C chord, but the way that they are voiced is completely unique to guitar, not piano, not synth, not violin. So when you are picking your chords, if you can have some kind of chord generator like that, it really helps. So that's what I use to dial in all of these chords right here. And then after I had that MIDI, I thought it just sounds super unrealistic. So what we're doing is, once again, we're humanizing everything. With an acoustic guitar, you're never, ever, ever hitting multiple strings at the same time. You're always kind of strumming them. So that's exactly the kind of pattern that you want to replicate. So you see right here how it's kind of creating a waterfall effect of, you know, lowest to highest. That's the same way that you would strum a guitar. And then as you can see right here, these little notes... We just have them a little bit softer so it feels like random, 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 rather than on the original up here, everything's just super hard. Listen to that versus this. So now once we've done that, once we've gotten that MIDI to feel a little bit more realistic, there's, you know, nothing's quantized, nothing is super hard velocities, once again, we go into our guitar setting. We're going to figure out what we want for this. So there's no effects on. For this guitar, I want it doubled. I want the condenser mic instead of like a dynamic or a ribbon. And uh, you can compress the velocities if you want. I have the tuning at like 16%. So it feels decently realistic. And then I print that out. Typically, all of these kind of acoustic MIDI guitar elements will be super bright and like super in your face. So what I always like to do is just darken them up a little bit with some EQ. Sometimes I'll use like tape saturation. I'm going to go ahead and compress it a little bit because that's what I would do with acoustic guitar that I record in the room. And then I'm going to add some kind of like room response or room impulse or reverb just to put that in a live space. So I have a small room at like 20% wet. And now it sounds like this. So now we go from this to this. And then when you pop all four of those guitars on, it is a pretty massive effect of a difference. So let's go ahead and let's just add all the original amp sim so you can hear everything exactly how it would have been straight out of native instruments. And then I'll show you what it sounds like with all of my tones and all of my effects. So here's what it sounds like out of native instruments. Everything feels super undynamic, non-humanized. Once we humanize everything. Once we get rid of all of those effects and do our own DI and our own processing. And then the last thing that I like to do, if possible, is just find some kind of realistic guitar loops that are live recorded that maybe have some fret noise, they have some sliding, they have something else going on, something like this. Something like this.
And then once I kind of subtly layer those in, they're not adding anything super crazy melodically, but they do add a lot of realism. And you can follow these same exact steps in terms of, you know, programming your velocity so they feel more dynamic, making sure everything doesn't fall right on the grid, knowing how to voice an instrument or how to actually play that instrument. These kind of things, I think, scale across programming all realistic instruments. So bass, violin, piano. It's a little bit different when you're doing a strummed element like a bass or a guitar or a bowed element like a violin, because when we play it on keyboard, it's super percussive, right? Piano can feel really realistic really easily. Synths can feel really realistic. Even drums, because drums are percussion and piano is percussion. But strum stuff, it is not played like this at all. So if you can find elements or ways to, you know, think about a piano more as a guitar or more as a bass, I think it goes a long way. So now I want to show you one final little example. I'm going to show you what everything sounds like with some really simple drums and bass in the mix so you can hear how unrealistic this initial kind of program guitar sounds versus what we come up with at the end. So here we go. Humanize it. with my tones. And every guitar that you're hearing there is programmed. So hopefully these tips will help you kind of understand how to program guitar a little bit better, how to get a little bit more out of some of the guitar, you know, plugins that you might have, how to kind of sculpt your own tones and take something that feels super generic, super unnatural, super undynamic, and turn that into something that feels a little bit more raw, a little bit more authentic, and a little bit more human. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, if you want to support us, you can head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. Check out our spring sale that we are running right now, 25% off of literally anything on our store. Also, make sure that you go check out that course that I just talked about, Indie Rock and Alternative, because this is a thing that we kind of do throughout the course, right? The course uses a ton of live guitar and a ton of live bass, but in it, I talk a little bit about how to turn those elements into MIDI. And then in the course, you can kind of see what it sounds like with live elements versus MIDI elements. We even go over things like programming drums to start the song and then mixing live recorded drums towards the end of the song. This thing is incredible. I record my vocals in real time, edit everything in real time. It's 16 and a half hours. You get to literally see every decision that I'll make when I make a record. And uh, the final song that came out is absolutely incredible. So go check that out. Indie Rock and Alternative is available now. Again, it's 25% off because of our sale as well. And then other than that, I'm going to see you guys next week with more content. Let me know what videos you want to see down in the comments down below. If you like this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us out a ton, but I'll see you soon. Much love. Peace.